Buenos dias, que paso amigos? Welcome back to John's Moto Garage. So whether you're brand new to riding and you're looking to get your first cruiser and you want to go with the Harley, or maybe you're just switching over from metrics to your Harley for the first time, or maybe you're switching from sport bikes to the Harley scene. One of the age old questions that I see all the time is do I do the Harley Dyna or the Harley Sportster? Today we're going to be going over some of the differences between the two bikes. We're going to be doing a visual side-by-side -side comparison of the two. And I'll go over some things you may want to consider when deciding which one's the best bike for you. Now, I'm not going to tell you which bike to buy. And just like everything else, it really just comes down to the individual. There's lots of factors that come into play. And everybody's a little bit different. But hopefully you can get an idea of some of the differences between the two bikes and some reasons why you might pick one over the other or vice versa. And if you haven't already, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. As always, thanks for the support. So, for starters right here, we've got 2013 Harley-Davidson Street Bob Custom. This is the Dyna line. This one happens to be a 103 cubic inch. Most of these are belt drive. This has a chain conversion. It's a six speed, air-cooled, fuel injected motorcycle. This one has a lot of aftermarket add-ons, mostly just bolt-ons. So this is not gonna be your stock standard looking. Dyna by any means but some of the other Dynas out there you've got your low rider you've got the fat bob you've got the wide glide super glide street bob i think those are some of the main Dynas out there harley no longer makes the Dyna line they are all soft tails now but this still applies there's lots of lots of used ones out there on the market and i think you can kind of just lump the soft tail in with this obviously there's key differences there but really people are looking at do you get the sportster or do you get the slightly larger bike and what are going to be some of the reasons for that and then over here of course you got the harley davidson sportster this one's a 2012 sport sportster 883 so this one's a five speed fuel injected air cooled as well also belt drive now the cool thing with the sportster is you can get your 883s or you can get your 1200s it's going to be a slightly bigger engine and the sportster also has tons of different trims so you can get the iron 883 you can get the nightster you can get the 72 the 48 they got the sportster low the roadsters i mean they have tons of different options and i believe since 57 they've had these bikes so the sportster is a smaller engine so it's a little bit lower to the ground it's going to be a lighter motorcycle whereas with the dyna typically you're going to have a little bit the engine's bigger the bike is heavier it's a longer wheelbase and usually it's going to sit maybe a little bit taller as well so you know like i said it really comes down to personal preference what you're going to be doing but some things to consider what are you going to be using the bike for what's your height what's your size what's your experience riding do you plan on just zipping around town bar hopping are you going to be on the freeways do you plan on doing longer rides those are some of the questions to ask yourself because the sportster especially looking at the 883 super fun zippy lightweight bike perfect for entry-level riders you can and people do take these on long cross-country rides but it's not going to be the optimal bike for it it's not going to be comfortable for riding two up again people do it but it's just not going to be the optimal bike it's not built for that this is purpose built for basically zipping around town bar hopping cruising all that fun stuff it definitely hits the mark when it comes to that i really dig just the kind of classic look of the sporties it kind of captures that bobber look especially if you go to the iron 883 the nightster some of those ones they just are really nice clean looking motorcycles another cool thing with the sportsters tons of people customize these the sporty 1200 you've got tons of people doing you know the club style wheelies stunting all kinds of crazy stuff you can do on these bikes with the sportsters typically and this is the used market because that's typically where i'm buying my bikes you can get these for a fraction of the cost that you'd be paying for the, you know, for the Dyna year for year, mileage for mile. There's no reason the Sportster should cost as much as the Dyna. So it's another reason, depending what your budget is, the Sporty might just be the one that fits your budget and it gets you on two wheels. So those are some things to consider for the Sportster, why it might be a good bike for you. If you're new to riding, you're looking for something lightweight, you're not gonna be doing any long, crazy rides. You know, maybe you don't wanna jump, dump a ton of money into it. You're not really sure if biking's for you yet, the Sporty might be a good option. All right, let's jump over to the Dyna then. So the Harley Davidson Dyna. The interesting thing to me is the Dyna, you got the bigger engine, so it's gonna be a little bit faster, more power. Overall, it's a bigger, heavier bike. So the Dyna's a little bit more comfortable if you're doing longer rides. You can set it up to where it's 
optimal for the long rides. You can put forward controls on it. You can do all that stuff if you want to on the Dyna. Definitely get, it'll definitely be a little bit more comfortable for two up riding. It also has a larger tank. I honestly don't know fuel economy, the two, because you got the bigger engine, but you you know you have a, a bigger gas tank. So but an interesting thing to me with the Dynas is again, if you're really looking at getting a bike that you're gonna be doing, you know, long distance riding and touring and all that stuff on, then you might start creeping into the Road King and the Road Glide and the Ultra Classic and the Street Glide. You know, looking at full baggers. Cause this, you know, the Dyna isn't even, in my opinion, really gonna be the best bike for jumping on and going long distance, but it's kind of a good in between there. It's not super heavy like the Road King, so it's gonna be more comfortable for your average rider in and around town in slower speeds and you know in different situations, but it does have the ability to jump on the freeway and cruise at speeds. I'm a huge fan now of the club style Dynas. And uh, and of course, if you watched any of my other videos, I decided to tackle the wheelie challenge on this motorcycle and it has certainly been a challenge, but it's a fun one. So that's some of the reasons why I dig the Dyna, but it is a bigger, heavier motorcycle. You know, you're gonna have a little bit more power on that thing. So depending, you know, for your shorter riders or new riders, it may not be as comfortable starting out. Now, one of the problems is obviously for new riders, you don't know what your preferences are. You don't really, you know, you just don't know because you haven't been out riding yet. You haven't tried out different motorcycles. So you're just not sure. And so it can definitely be a hard decision. If and when possible, go sit on the bike, throw a leg over, kind of get a feel for it. But the only way you're ever going to really find out is once you've actually ridden the two bikes. Once you know what type of bike you're looking for and what type of riding you're going to be doing. So again, you guys, not an exhaustive list, but that's a side-by-side -side visual comparison of the two motorcycles. You can see what they look like. So again, just to recap, the sporty, lighter, probably better for your newer riders, but you go with the 1200, still nice, torquey, powerful bike. Not gonna be as ideal for the long distance, you know, freeway riding at high speeds. Not gonna be as ideal for two up, but you can still do tons of customizations. Lots of aftermarket parts out there for it, and people do the wheelie games on those motorcycles. And then the Dyna, more power, bigger bike, gonna be a little bit more comfortable on the freeways and you can do all your customizations with that one as well the Dyna is going to cost you more typically the sporty is going to be a lot more affordable entry-level motorcycle but those are the two options all right I'm going to show you real quick we'll go ahead and start the two bikes up Now, of course, this has aftermarket exhaust, but as far as, aside from the exhaust and the air intake, I mean, the engine's pretty much stock. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of the club style Dynas these days. I'm trying to learn wheelies and have fun with that kind of thing, but it's kind of an acquired taste for sure. When these first came out, I wasn't a huge fan of just the overall look of them. And don't let people fool you, Sons of Anarchy did not start this. People were doing this before Sons of Anarchy. And if you're interested just in that bike, I have other videos doing walk-arounds of that bike specifically. And then the Sporty here, this one's cold. I haven't had it started up in a while. Stock exhaust on this guy. All right, so there you have it, you guys, the Harley-Davidson Dyna side-by-side -side comparison with the Harley-Davidson Sportster. Hopefully that gives you a little useful information so you can decide which one you want to get, which one will be best for you. As always, thanks for checking out the channel. If you dig the content, be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below, and we'll hit you guys up on the next one. Adios.